morning dear friends we are about to begin this mass mass of wednesday of the third week of easter today's mass is dedicated for the intentions we see on the subtitle we pray for all of those intentions but i also like to offer this mass for your very private and personal intentions Whatever it is you're coming to God with this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are worshipping from. We pray for God's grace and courage, especially as our, this, our, our interest and desire to stay home is wearing thin for so many of us. People are worried. We pray that God may help us find calm and understand how he is doing, working on our behalf even if we cannot see it today's uh, he opening hymn will be morning has broken morning has broken morning has broken like the first morning Bed has broken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh for me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, today we, the church celebrates and honors a, a great woman, St. Catherine of Siena. So in this Mass we pray that through her prayers, God may specially bless the, the country of Italy and the people of Siena during this very difficult time. We also pray that she may provide us support at this time for every one of us struggling with this virus. She has done a lot of great work in the course of her life and we depend on people like her at moments like this. They are the ones interceding for us. And so through the prayers of St. Catherine, Catherine, may God bring us healing help recovery please bring your intentions before God's altar and ask for help in time of great need you were sent to heal the country of heart Lord have mercy Lord have mercy you came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Be present to your people, O Lord, we pray, and gracious Graciously ensure those you have endowed with the grace of faith and eternal share in the resurrection of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They broke out a severe persecution of the church. In Jerusalem and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria except the apostles devout men buried Stephen made a loud lament over him Saul meanwhile was trying to destroy the church entering house after house and dragging out men and women he handed them over to imprisonment. 
Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to seek to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what he had to say. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people. Many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his praise, his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth Cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to him. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Aaron. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry to God with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Everyone who believes in the Son has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me. And I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he has given me, but that I should raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. And I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I know every day um, would get more difficult. Every day will push us to greater despair or greater fallenness. We feel um, we are not doing as well as we expect to be doing. We see people um, still dying. We see more numbers increase. We hear maybe of things that we didn't think would happen. Young, younger folks also dying. And then it begins to create greater anxiety around us. So these are very unusual times. But they require every one of us to do the reasonable thing, to do what is reasonable, to adapt. Now, I, I know that a lot of people have um, 
have issues with the whole concept of natural selection. Now there's a lesson to learn in natural selection. The species that survive, or the people that survive, the businesses that survive, the marriages that survive, the schools, everything that survives and thrives must learn to be flexible, must learn to be adaptable, must learn to reorganize itself based on the changing circumstances. I, I just can't say to myself, well, it doesn't matter what is happening right now, I'm just going to be me. Nothing is going to change. No, that's, life is not lived like that. If I stand by those rules that nothing is going to change, I'm just going to be me, I will do what I want to do and how I want to do it and when I want to do it, in spite of whatever is happening, I'm not going to be doing that for a very long time. I can say that of myself. I will not be there doing that for a long time. So, God gave us the ability to adjust, to adapt, to change game, to change style. We've seen that happen even in sports. You see a team playing very poorly in the first half. In the second half, they readapt. They pull this person out. They bring someone else in. They change the game plan. And suddenly, they do well and maybe go ahead to win. So ability to adjust, to adapt, and to change your game when that time comes. It, it, it is the nature of the game that would make you change your own style. You cannot keep playing, choose to play it the same way and expect, especially when you're not winning and losing. So I, I like us to see, and like I said, more and more as I read the Bible in the context of this virus and everything that is happening around us, God is almost like revealing, you know, new insights to text I had read any number of times. Just watch and see what is happening here in the first reading. Scripture says, there broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem. They broke out. Now when you hear what's like breaking out, that means it happens surreptitiously. It happened like without warning. It happened without preparation. It happened without an alert and a warning signal. No one was expecting it. So generally when something happens that way where no one was expecting it, no one was prepared for it, it requires people to respond and to adjust quickly and change their game quickly because survival, survival is far more important at a time like that than anything else. It's only those who survive that will be there to tell, to even tell the story and carry on a civilization or carry on whatever mission that is there. And so the apostles too realized. The apostles understood. They were essential. They were essential. See what the Bible said. They broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Now, there's only one except, except the apostles. That means the essential persons, essential personnel stayed in Jerusalem. They did not leave. Now, why didn't they leave? They did not leave Jerusalem because they still had work to do in Jerusalem, even though their own lives were also at risk they stayed. And as I'm thinking about this text in the context of what we see today, I look at doctors and nurses. I look at um, EMS workers, fire department workers. I look at people who have to stay in this fight. I look at grocery store workers. I look at people who clean. Each time I watch, they come and clean our streets. They pick those, that, all of that trash that could be carrying viruses anywhere. They do all of that. Now, those are the essential workers. They are staying in spite of the danger. But we have also a role to play to keep them safe. We have a role to play to keep them safe, to make sure that our society and the mission doesn't die out. Everyone has a role to play. Everyone would need to change game and readjust. So, people ran for safety. They did not stay there and say, you know what, 
we're not gonna we're gonna sit down here. The apostles didn't tell them, hey, you guys should stay, don't run. No, they allowed them to run for safety. But God also had a plan. Even though persecution broke, a bad thing was happening, people were being killed. God allowed them. Scripture says they ran to Judea, to Samaria, and to different areas. Now, there were people who also stayed to bury others. I think about, you know, our funeral home workers who are burying our deaths right now, even without us. There were devout men who stayed back and buried Stephen and lamented Stephen, even though there was no one else there with them. They stayed back and did that. And so today, I want us to also remember. We remember our funeral home workers and all those who do that work. They do the work of these devout people for you, for me, and for all of our dead. And scripture goes on, it says, Meanwhile, Saul was trying to destroy the church, entering house to house. And I'm thinking about Saul here as the coronavirus. Saul was intent on destroying the church. Now, the coronavirus isn't just about the attacking the church, but fundamentally it has changed the way we do things, even for us, our church. But it was, Saul was more about making sure the mission came to an end, that Christ did not come to anything. I'm thinking about how this virus is just entering house to house, almost like hunting us down. I don't know of any household that in some way has not been touched by this, by this virus. And he said he was dragging men and women and everyone else, dragging, virtually dragging. And when you hear these words, dragging out, that that's what this virus is doing, almost like snuffing out life from every one of us, choking all those who are sick from it. Now, scripture goes on and says, now, those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Those who had been scattered, those who were running, did not just run. They changed the way they were going to do stuff. They didn't stop doing what they were doing. They kept doing the things they were doing. They just changed the way and how and where they were doing it. They went, ran from Jerusalem, went to Samaria, went to Judea. But they went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. So, so that's what we're trying to do too. Though we may not be able to preach in churches where people are seated and worshiping, we don't stop doing the work of God because a virus is out there threatening and ravaging our towns and our, our societies. No, we will change. We, are, we have adapted too to be able to do what we're doing right now and streaming God's message and God's sacraments and God's mysteries to our people everywhere. The church has learned, just like the early church, to adapt to new ways. The mission of God did not stop when, when, when persecution broke. The mission of God is also not stopping with this coronavirus. But we want to do the wisest thing, the reasonable thing, to survive this danger and this threat, just so that the church will return and society will flow again. You and I must do the reasonable thing. That means not put ourselves in danger. I see people still going out on beaches, doing stuff, especially even when you go, make sure you protect yourself. It's only those who adapt and adjust well who will survive and thrive. That's a fact. Believe it, it is a fact. And there's nothing wrong with changing plan and changing patterns and changing the way we do stuff. Even viruses do that. Their ability to survive has to do with mutation, being able to change, adjust, and readapt. It is a survival strategy that God has given to all living organisms. We must be reasonable by using it also as a church and adjust and adapt and make sure we survive this virus. So my dear friends, I, I don't know what you're doing to survive. I don't know what you're doing to stay alive in your family, but look for new things, new ways. If, if we just sit down and think about how we did things before, 
and wish we were able to do those things the same way we did them before and not think about new ways, we will be, we will die. We will exhaust, we will lose our, our minds. And so when things have changed in our lives, the church offers us, it's okay for us to also make new changes, new adjustments, new adaptations just to survive. This would have an end too. And then we can return to the life we always had and thrive as we always did and always wanted to. So I encourage you, dear friends, there is a plan in all of this. When, when you read the book of Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, scripture says, this is Joseph speaking of his brothers, what you guys intended for evil, God intended it for good. He used it for good. What the coronavirus is intending for evil, I know God is going to use it for good. And I think the Apostle Paul also says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, says, All things work together unto good for those of them who trust God. I don't know what is going on in your life now, but I can tell that there is one who holds that life and holds that future. And I know he's laying all the plans in place towards good. You may not see it now, and I may not see it now, but I believe he's laying all the plans for your life, for my life, for the life of every one of us towards good because the Bible says he does not reject anyone. It doesn't matter who comes to him. He doesn't turn him away or turn her away. So my dear friends, as we go through this moment, let us learn the lessons here from this reading, this first reading in this situation and make the changes we need to make just to survive. When we have survived, God is going to bless us and help us thrive. I believe that I have no doubt about that. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Most gracious God, today you open our minds and our hearts that show our lives will change, not just once. The church has undergone several changes, has had to you know, adjust, readjust, throughout the course of history, throughout the course, the course of our lives. This is another challenge we face. Give us grace, almighty God, to make the right adjustments. Give us grace, almighty God, and good judgment to make the right changes we need to make at this time. And help us to survive this time, just so to thrive by your grace in a few weeks and a few months from now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's scripture reminds us that there are people who are in prison today and some may die in prison as a result of this virus not because of anything they have done Saul was arresting and, in, and putting people in prison for nothing so we pray for all of those who are in jail pray especially for those who are in jail for offenses they did not commit that you will God may protect them too because most of them are in greater danger now than ever and they too have families, have loved ones, people who care about them. Protect them, O oh God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, dear God, for our doctors and our nurses and all healthcare workers, especially those who have borne the brunt of this, this virus. Some of them are losing their, their lives through their own hands, O oh God. We pray for those who have died by suicide may be exhausted or burnt out already. We ask, dear God, that you renew their strength, that you renew their grace, that you meet their own needs too, as they struggle to meet the needs of their sick children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, dear God, for others who are celebrating events in their lives at this time and have no opportunity to celebrate as they would that they may feel the power of your blessing and your grace and the joy that comes with those events. We pray too for those who are recovering from other forms of ailments, cancers, strokes, heart diseases. Pray for children who are battling all forms of ailments, that you, dear God, may send the power of your healing through them to restore all of the damaged areas, all of the unhealthy areas that they skip or these persons may recover fully during this period. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, I also want to pray for families. There are so many families that are stressing out right now. 
there is tension emotionally there are fights there's violence in some families right now at this time i beg you dear god that your spirit of peace and calm may just visit with those families and help them reconcile differences without violence or without creating or escalating the situation right now we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer so we ask our blessed mother to pray with us as we say hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed are thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death amen Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made him become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and walk of the man have become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within them may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you o lord but in this time above all to lord yet more gloriously when christ our passover has been sacrificed for with the old order destroyed a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to the co heirs of eternal life and may praise and worship you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, let us now pray in the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And from me to you and your families, I just want to wish you God's peace and God's mercy and God's grace for every need. So always, you are the delight of God. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word on my soul. Lord Jesus, today you remind us that anyone, no one who comes to you will ever be turned away. Your children are opening their hearts and their homes to welcome you, O oh God. They are letting you know how much they all need you. Your church needs you. Your children need you. We all need you, O oh God. Nourish us with your body, and for those who cannot receive you physically, may they feel the effect spiritually in their lives. We ask all of this, and are confident you will grant, because we ask in your most holy and precious name. Amen.
let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness in the next. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us in this holy sacrifice. I pray that God may be with you. I pray that God may watch over you. I pray that God may nurture you. So always I'd like to end my reflect, end every moment and everything I do by reminding you how much God is in love with you. And you don't have to deserve it. He loves you because you belong to him. That's not my word. That's what this, the gospel said. He doesn't turn anyone away. And Jesus said that's the will of God that he should turn no one away. The will of God is that he accepts everyone and he loves everyone. He loves you in spite of you. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, I'd like for us to sing a song to our Blessed Mother. We sing, Hail Holy Queen, and throne above. Hail Holy Queen,